all your photo, video, and voiceover needs, check out the fine folks Blu ray Productions. They will take good care of you. If you don't believe me, you can see for yourself. Check out their work at blueberryproductions.tv, the Facebook page, Blueberry Productions, also a Vimeo page, a YouTube page, and it's Blueberry, B L U B E R R Y, Prod on Twitter. Check them out today. Blueberry Productions, great people, great work, great service. Hip hop fans, I got a great album for you. The debut album from Family Grinding NC, True Speech, and 313 Fresh. We're going to give you two discs, 33 songs of pure, genuine hip hop. Albums available on iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, IllStreetRex.com, and streaming live right now on Rhapsody, Beats Music, Spotify, Xbox Music, Slacker Radio, and SoundCloud. Check them out today. True Speech and 313 Fresh. Family Grind ENT. Believe in it. Get it. enough everybody go to familygrind.com that's familygrind.com s-a-m-i-l-y g-r-i-n-d dot com I need you all to subscribe to the newsletter I need everybody to get hip because we got some really really big things coming very 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 soon I can't give any of the details away when I tell you soon I mean if you blink it'll be here before you know it so I need everybody to check out familygrind.com also, check out Pirate Radio. The album is still available right now on iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, IllStreetOnline.com, and anywhere you can stream music. But, ladies and gentlemen, you also want to go to YouTube.com slash FGETV. That's YouTube.com slash FGETV and subscribe to the channel. Big things coming soon, people, and I appreciate everybody rocking with us so far. So let's keep it moving through the rest of the year. No doubt, dog. I think the emails have deteriorated once again, bro. This week, the emails was off the chain, bro. Before I read the the main one, I want to read. But, dog, what's up with the emails, man? What, what, what happened to the dog? What happened to him? I don't even know, man. Honestly, I really can't even describe it. I try to figure out the emails as often as I can, and every time I just come up empty-handed, I can't quite figure it out. First of all, our names, JR and True Speech, not Wayne Speech, not Wayne Spinach, not not LJ. Look, it's JR and True Speech. You get these damn names right. If you're going to send us an email and you want us to take you serious, get these damn names right, man. Like, for real, it's getting, it's getting old. I don't understand the, the mindset of it, but it's the simplest thing in the world. Hey, y'all make it so complicated, man. Just get the names right. Exactly. And this email I'm about to read, it's deep in theory. Here we go. Listen to the email. Jacob the Boston, before I get started, speech, already speech, already. How does J.R. the Boston man become, quote, Jacob the Boston? Already. And... Wayne Speech, Jacob the Boston, and Wayne Speech. Once again, how does Jared the Boss Man and True Speech become Jacob the Boston and Wayne Speech? But the email itself has merit. Yo, Maine, look, me and a roster hoe having beef about effing her 
when she about ready to come off her woman thing, I'm totally against it. I'm not trying to dive in Bloody Mary. I read this week and did, and it sickened me out. Even though I wore my shield, it looked like a pig had been slaughtered, and the smell was horrific. Two showers, and I still feel sick. Following morning, while she was serving me up, slobbering down my jolly rancher, she got real worked up and wanted some hold. I told her no because of what happened the previous night. She claimed, quote, she was good and there was no blood. I wouldn't budge. I stuck to my guns about not doing it. Then she threw me out and cut off. Guess he meant cut me off. What's wrong with this chick, question mark? Chick is wildin'. When hoes start freaking while they friend in town, question mark, ain't they supposed to give a couple of days or so to air out? Help your boy out, Raymond. Just feel free to address our man, Raymond. Raymond, 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 Raymond. You're disgusting. I'm just going to throw it straight out there, bro. I'm not a fan of partner Red Sea. Me personally, if a woman tells me she's on a cycle, that means chill out or I'll see you when I see you. Not to sound like a jerk, I'm just keeping it a buck. Because that's trife, bro. Even if you strap up, you're going in to blood infested territory. You know it's not going to be fresh. You know it's not going to be 100. Why not just calm down for a couple of days, let the situation subside, and then go back in? I mean, you just know. Raymond, dog, you need a hobby. You need something to occupy your time in the meantime. Because this is going to happen every time. It's going to be, it's not going to be right, dog. It's going to be just disgusting. Me personally, I'm not a fan of it. So you need to really find something else to do for that few days out the month when your woman is preoccupied with her menstrual cycle. Because that's you disgusting ass. Dog, I agree. Raymond, now, the part where you messed up at is when you decided to feed into her pressure of giving her the business while the rest she was in town. I have a personal rule, period, per, plus three. You know what that means? That means while she's on her period, plus three days for her to air out. Because period vagina has a smell to it. It smells a certain type of way. And when you mix the smell of sex and natural odors, and it just makes it even worse. You might want to smell that. Now, in explaining that to you, I'll tell you this. That time of the month is a woman's horniest time of the month, believe it or not, for those who don't know that. That's their horniest time of month. So, yes, they're going to be very, very horny. That's why when you mess with them and they on a period, they get real pissed off because they can't do anything about it. They are so horny, which contributes to that whole pen messing attitude because guess what? They want the D, but they can't get the D. And especially the ones who don't get off, off of oral pleasures, and they, they, they can't do nothing. They're just stuck and neutral. And what somebody happens here, Raymond, is your girl was serving you up, and then she she got worked up. She pressured she pressured you into it. You know, you you did it one time, and you were sticking out by it, and you, as, as you should, because it's sick down there. It's a smell down there. You can't do that, Raymond. You have to stick to your gun. Either you have to go home, and but now nah, I'm good. For her to cut you off because you don't want to dabble in the Red Sea. That's shows her immaturity. That shows her selfishness in that regard, Raymond. So while in this situation you both share blame for this situation in the future, Raymond, do not capitulate and be pressure something you don't want to do. Because that you was pressured. I get you wanna keep her happy and appease her, but if she's gonna cut you off over trying to approach the purpose not to be sickened out sexually by her natural cycle and rhythm of the month, you don't either. 
Yeah, and then they cut that beat off. What did K Camp tell you, player? Yeah, and China, you know what? You know what I'm saying? So I, I just want to Raymond, and also uh, I want to address you, Jared the Boss Man, got Jacob the Boston, and Wayne's speech. Did you any, any closing remarks on Raymond's email speech? Um, Raymond, stop being a nasty ass, bro. Calm down and just wait. Have some patience. That's nasty. It really is. And strapping it up doesn't make it any better. Exactly. And a final email before we get to the boss report tonight on the Boss Man Show. True Speed Starters Day. This email right here. It's pretty bad. Leo Spitch and quote Justin Sunman. New to town, where W-A-R-E, do, D-U-E-I-E-Y-E, need to go to find, quote, pump asses and patty faces so I can feek, F-E-E-K, on them all night to Carol Black. Speech, what in the hell is he talking about? No, I don't even know. Like, I really, I, I honestly don't know. I, hell if I know, bro, I got nothing. I don't even I don't even know what the hell he's talking about. <laughs> exactly. And a bonus email that came in that I'm gonna address now which is another one. Now, this is this this takes the cake speech, right? The bonus email. Dear penis, D E E R E penis, where W A Y E R U Rick and R I C K N I can jet a circumstance pie from Pole City, question mark, Pole, P-O-L-L City. Have you, Eric, be there? Will so let me know, Kevin C. and Sacto. What in the hell are you talking about, Kevin? What in the hell? Speech, dear penis, really? Who are you addressing here? It's one of our names. I'm kind of offended that he started off his salutation with dear penis. Like, I really don't even want to address that email just for how it started off, bro, to be honest with you. It's, it's disgraceful. Like, how do you start off an email with dear penis? Like, what? <laughs> I mean, seriously. I, who are you referring to? I mean, we're two guys here. We don't want to refer to as, quote, dear penis. Okay? How about this? Or you email me in speech. I'll, speech, well, we need to refresh them of the email rules murder this year. Our names correctly. Have a, have a relevant take. Spell your stuff correctly. And properly salutate your email. That's all. So. That's it. It is very simple. <laughs> very simple. Example. Dear Bossman Show. Or. Dear JR and True, dear speech and boss man, those are acceptable. Yo, dog, what happened to, to the Cavs in the finals? Signed, Kevin. That's a cool email. We, we, we can work with that. No, nobody's name is misspelled. Those are rough and take. Spell correctly, and you just said your name. I don't need your city. I don't need your city. I don't need where you work, what you're doing. That's your name. So, our name is right. Good take. Our, our spell correctly and proper sanitation is just your name. We'll be good to go. Dog, anything you want to add to that, dog? I, nah, you 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 handled it beautiful. And that's really what it is. I just I don't know how people can send emails, right? But that right there, decent email. So, I hope you got that part of the show. Down, because now we go to the boss report. So it's gonna be really be stupider than this. So speech, people, let's do it. First story, speech: North Carolina woman arrested after setting sprinkler system off in the ER because quote her weight was too damn long. Wow. I mean, I. Wow. How long was she waiting? That's what I want to know. Seven hours. 
Jesus Christ. Oh, uh, wow. That's unreal. That is unreal. That is, wow. Yeah. I, I'm stunned at that, bro. Yes, for a broken wrist at that. That's nuts. That should be a freak for the damn so by then. Exactly. <laughs> and, uh, no hate. Ten stripper Johns popped in Florida Shaky Butt Club for, quote, touching customers and letting them insert things during lap dance. Uh, well, like, uh, hey, one thing I learned from strip clubs is everything is for sale. I will say that. So somebody must have paid a nice little price for it. But that ain't, that ain't nothing out of the ordinary at the, at the right strip club. So it is what it is. Somebody yes, made some indeed. money that night. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah, and, and you know about you know, strip club, you got to love how all these sick, rich, old guys or older people, that is be waiting outside of the strippers to come out to take them home with them, take them to the whole city, out to the club in. You got to love that about oh, yeah, the man. Club. The, 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 the no, house, the house club <laughs> That, right, exactly, the after strip club. This is all for sale, though, bro. Already. already. And a uh, Connecticut man calls 911 to report that his cat is attacking him and not letting him inside the house. <laughs> <laughs> He's a terrible pet owner. How do you how do you allow your animal to do that, man? Like, for real, that's just absolutely ridiculous. This is, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. It's up there. Kind of like how Raymond's email was. <laughs> God. Oh, man. A Florida man is arrested after kidnapping neighbor at gunpoint for, quote, doing her laundry too loudly and watching Martin all day. You said Martin? Yeah. Well, Martin is a good show. I'm not going to lie. Even the reruns, it's, it's, it's pretty hilarious. However, I think that's like a little excessive. You know what I mean? Exactly. <laughs> so he puts neighbor at gunpoint for watching Martin doing her laundry too loudly. Wow. I mean, that's a I know. Reaction. I think it is a gross overreaction. Uh, even though Martin's a good show, I, I would say that's a, that's a bit excessive. And... A big, a big woman goes crazy wrecking the store because, quote, they're all out of her wild berry Skittles. Her what berry? You said her wild berry? Yeah, wild berry Skittles. No, no, all the little, little, little berry ones that they have now, the tropical blues and blueberry, that whole wild berry Skittles series. Not the original one. Wow. Well, all right. <laughs> no, I feel you. This is wild. Wow. Okay, I didn't know. I didn't even know. <laughs> uh, and, and this is a good one. Florida woman arrested after calling 911 to complain about drug dealer not delivering the weed on time. Well, I guess when you have an emergency and you need to get high and you can't get high, who goes to the car and the police, right? Exactly. I guess he was on, I guess that's customer service for drug dealers. I don't really know. I mean, maybe. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. And here we go. This is a weird story right here. An Italian grandmother arrested after accidentally causing family by serving hot chocolate that was 25 years old expired. Why is it still there? <laughs> at, at the 25 years, why is it still in the house? Why did why why does she not throw it away? I'm, I have so many I have so many questions. I, I really do. <laughs> exactly. What 25 years expired? Hot 
I don't even know why I'm still in there. She's been thrown away. Man. Wow. And, uh, here we go. Florida man's arrested for beating Gator to death. The quote, he had no idea beating a Gator to death was illegal. Well, first of all, how does one beat a Gator? Somebody needs to answer this question for me. How do you beat an alligator? Dog, maybe with maybe with concrete, you know, a wood plank, a uh, metal. I don't know. Uh, uh, um, those ones I think of, you know, mortar mix. I don't know, man. Something. Yeah, like, do you have some brass knuckles and just start wailing on his ass? Like, what do you do to beat an alligator? That's a new one. Yeah, it is. I'm I'm curious. I really want to Google it. I need to find this out. <laughs> a, uh, California woman is arrested after faking pregnancy, kidnapping two babies to convince the boyfriend he's the father. See, why do people always got to bring the babies into this, man? That's my biggest problem. Is why kidnapping the two ba- Why everybody always got to bring the babies into this? Just, we are doing a horrible job of raising and taking care of this next generation. I swear for God. Mm-hmm. And um, another Florida man's arrested... How can he illegally keep the alligator in three year old son's room to nurse it back to health? How? That's my only question. How do you properly, or period for that matter, keep an alligator in a room, in a house, on land? Don't know. Exactly. Exactly. So many questions. And, uh, you sitting on the couch. Woman refuses to pay every, back Everett's college because, quote, she didn't get the job they promised. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess when you make a promise, some people really want you to stick to it no matter what, right? I mean, that's, I think that's a. Exception in this particular case, but I guess she feels otherwise. <laughs> exactly. And a Florida man is arrested after crashing car through fence onto baseball field while getting driving lessons from teenage sons. Well, what? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what? Like, just wow, bro. I am, wow, that's all, it, wow. All right, all right. <laughs> oh, yes. And <laughs> Kentucky man's arrested after being beat senseless by a woman with ceramic chicken because after he tried to attack her breast and her butt saying, quote, top and bottom, me horny, me horny, top and bottom, you're horny, you're horny. You never know what's going to come across the boss report, and here we go. I'm actually, I think I'm more shocked at the ceramic chicken. Where does one find the ceramic chicken? <laughs> and how does one just get the notion of, all right, I'm going to beat somebody with the ceramic chicken? So, yeah. I'll lay this damn story right there. I'll lay this damn story. Yeah. <laughs> And of course, a Florida man was arrested after being found living in North Carolina after faking his death to cash out two million dollar life insurance policy to live Grant Golden. He started out the story with Florida man. Everything else after that speaks for itself. I mean, Florida. Every time it starts off the sentence with Florida man and Florida woman, it's gonna be the most ridiculous <laughs> thing you've ever heard. Florida, I, just, I don't understand. I got people out of Florida, and I still don't understand what the hell is wrong with that state, but Lord have mercy. Florida, Florida, Florida. Uh, Florida, Florida 
gang of friends are arrested after placing three sleep in Florida, man, on the balcony because it's going too loudly and he falls off and breaks his neck and leg. Well, that's unfortunate considering the circumstances. I mean, the circumstances surrounding him being out there in the first place is ridiculous, but the after effect is absolutely just, that's unfortunate. <sighs> and dog, finally dog, a South Carolina man was arrested after pulling his junk out at work to have a woman suck his you-know-what in the workplace. When you say in the workplace, are you talking about his cubicle at his desk in the cubicle, bathroom? Yes. Wow. Dog, All right, so I want to say he's going to go in the bathroom. All right, that's a dog, he, But you're talking about at the cubicle. That's going to raise some questions when the boss walks around, at, you know, right after lunch. Dog, he arrived in her cubicle with his junk ready and out. And she turned into his you-know-what. And was trying to go. All right. All right. <laughs> kind of gangster. Can't, can't front on that. That's definitely a G move. Uh, probably inappropriate for workplace, though. If I had to guess, if I was human resource, I would advise against that. But that's just me. You know, what do I know? Exactly. And, folks. Have the boss report tonight on Tuesday Thursday on the Boss Man Radio Network. And if you don't know, now you know, you know. Dog, from the emails to the boss report, what is your take so far on tonight's report and emails to the show so far? <laughs> I mean, I'm just pissed that people still can't give my damn name right, dog. I, my name is not complicated, man. It really starts to bother me. It's disrespectful at this point. Give my damn name right. It's true speech. J.R. the boss man, J.R. the boss man, and true speech, true speech. Like, yo, stop effing that up. Also, I want to know about the ceramic chicken. I really do. I'm quite curious as to how one acquires a ceramic chicken and where one acquires a ceramic chicken from. I have questions. I need answers. And uh, my question is, how does the alligator live off of, live out of the water? someone's home as a pet. You know, I don't know. I don't know. I wonder how you beat an alligator. Like, I'm really, I'm very curious about that. How does one, be, what instrument do you use to beat an alligator? I don't know you can do that. I mean, last week we had sharks. <laughs> this week it's alligators. Other weeks has been horses. Dog. But, y'all want to jinx it. Knock on wood. No stories of penis mutilation this week. This is true, but we, as we both know, it's just an absolute matter of time either way. It can go at any given point, any given moment in time. It can happen and go down. So let's just put it. It doesn't. <laughs> yes, indeed. And dog, I sent you a picture of a wiki page of the Cavs de facto coach Teron Lou. Hilarious. The whiskey fan for Teron Lou says this. Teron Jamar Lou is a retired American professional basketball player and current de facto coach of the Cleveland Cavaliers of the National Basketball Association. Dog, I have a problem already. I the de facto coach was LeBron James, not Teron Lou. This is true. This is true. <laughs> LeBron James was the real head coach of the Cleveland Cavaliers this season. I mean, David Blair is a very highly paid assistant coach. Exactly. And I'm going to be honest with you, dog. I didn't even know Tyrone Lou. I thought he went overseas or something, man. This is probably the funniest wiki page. I think he edited this page himself, to be honest with you. I think he just went in and edited this page his damn self. Because some of the stuff is on here. I'm like, come on, dog. Ain't nobody this big of a Tyrone Lou fan. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, dog, I couldn't help but laugh at that. I, I, I really couldn't help but laugh at that because of my dog. This is freaking amazing. How, how the dude just kind of gave himself this title. I was like, really, dude? Like, the de facto coach of the Cavaliers. Wow, true. He is funny as hell. Like, but, but, but the true coach is LeBron James. He confers with Teron Lou. 
But the true coach is LeBron James. And oh, ultimately absolutely. in this series, ultimately in this series, he was out coached by Steve Kerr. <laughs> coach James was out coached by Steve Kerr. And there's no ifs, ands, and buts about that because it's just, it is what it is. They were out, man. They were injured very badly. They didn't have a lot to work with, playing seven guys only. And, dog, did you see where, where he pretty much put Tristan Thompson in on, on his own? Did you see that? Yes, I saw that. I'm glad I wasn't the only one that noticed that, though. I watched him like, did he, t- he just call for a substitution? I'm like, did he just, did nobody else see that? And I was like, all right, well, David Black is cool with him. Whatever. <laughs> and, like, they got two many options anyway. I mean, Black has to be cool with it or else. <laughs> this is true. Let's be honest. I mean, Black knew he only had what seven game. guys. Yeah, Black knew he was playing with a a a, a deflated tire in the first place. Not calling the Cleveland Cavaliers a deflated tire. I'm calling the spade a spade. They didn't have a lot of their key players. However, I wonder like, why did they play Sean Marion? Like Sean Marion was on the bench too, right? He sure was. Why did they play Sean Marion? Why did he never? Maybe. He Maybe he's out of gas. The Matrix is retiring. Maybe he had nothing left to give. I thought maybe you could go to Sean Marion. He could give you something. You know, he could give you something, a little, a little bit, a few minutes. Mike Miller is just like, Mike Miller's probably regretting not going to Denver and taking that $5 million now. Oh, absolutely. I mean, he took, oh, absolutely. Remember when he did it, I said how dumb he was? Remember hey. what I said, because, you can't make up this money. Once you miss it, you miss it. It's over. I know his agent is kicking his ass. But, I mean, the whole thing is they only play seven guys, right? But if you look at that, the roster that they had. Now, they didn't have a great roster, I'm going to be honest with you, but they had some pieces. They had some, some wily veterans that they could have came in, gave them some quality minutes, you know, and made an impact. And the reason I say that is because the player they had on the floor didn't make any impact or any major difference after game three. So, having said that, if you were in a finals situation, why would you leave anything chance? You have you have everything to lose, but you have nothing to lose. You go balls to the wall and you give it everything you got. So, hell, I'd have been trying some I'd have been trying some rotations. I'd have looked at Sean, I'd have been like, Hey dog, your knees good? Give me something. Exactly. He just sat over there and did nothing, man. Not a damn thing. I'm just like, really, dude? Like, really? Like, really? You know, I was just like, I couldn't believe. Uh, but I said, if he went a little bit deeper, just give him a few minutes here and there. And But in game five, trying to downsize to Miles God was like, mm-mm. Like, trying to play him but, the but small ball though, wasn't going to work. But here's the killer part, though. Like, really, really, really think about it. Miles Gavin, I said this. I said this from the beginning of the playoffs. I said the Cleveland Cavaliers have an X factor in Tim- Timothy Miles Gavin. I was about to call his boy Timothy. Anyway, Miles Gavin, right? Out of the entire mm. roster of both the Golden State Warriors and the Cleveland Cavaliers, the biggest player on both teams was Timothy Mozgov. There's no legit big man on Golden State that was capable of shutting down Mozgov, especially in the paint. Couldn't nobody bang with him. Couldn't nobody outboard him. The more athletic than he was, but Mozgov is a legit seven-footer. He's a legit footer. He's a big man, right? If they would have facilitated the offense more so through Mozgov, if they would have ran more pick and rolls, if they would have made sure that he was that his defender was biting the double team, boom, he's open in the post, right? They didn't do that. They literally just took Miles Gav out of the office. I don't know what the hell they did in game or or they played small ball. But the whole thing is, running it through Miles Gav was working the first couple games. It was effective. All you needed to do was have your additional role players step up their production. So uh, Smith definitely needed to play some better games. Christian Thompson should have been playing some better games. And and Amon Sharper could have been playing a little bit more effectively. But one of the most effective pieces that they had first four games, Mozgov, when they used him effectively. Because let's be honest, 
Andre Iguodala cannot body Timothy Mosgaard. It's because Draymond Green. They're legit maybe 6'8", 6'9". Mosgaard is a 7 foot. He's a big man. He plays big man basketball. And he got a nice little mid-range shot. They completely took him out the equation, and LeBron James trying to be Magic Johnson, trying to play all five positions. But whatever. And looking at the Cavs' roster speech is uh, opt-out clear for LeBron James, Kevin Love, and J.R. Smith. Amon Shepard's a free agent. Gelly's a free agent. Kristen Thompson wants a max deal. So does Amon Shepard. Man, they bet not giving him no damn max deal. Uh, James Jones is free agent as well. Mary is going to retire. Mozgov is a, is a, has a team option, which they'll pick up. Instead. So the Cavs hey, the Cavs are out, got, got a lot of money for the decision to make. Do you give Love a one-year max deal, LeBron a one-year max deal, give Jared Smith money because LeBron likes him, Thompson a max deal? They're going to be like a Laker level of luxury tax next year. Trying to repay all these people. I think Dan Gilbert gonna cut the check. How many do you let go? Well, Dan Gilbert already said he's comfortable cutting the check, so I think he's gonna cut that check. Because let's be honest, they have a great nucleus of players. Really, really pay attention to what they were able to do playing a seven man roster. And out of that seven man roster, three of their players were not that effective. So if you were getting back your four starting five. And you have your role players on the bench coming in fresh, ready to move. You put them in a position that they're obviously meant to play because they show that they can start, but they're not legit starters. So if you put them in a position where they can come off the bench, provide that energy, keep the momentum going, you can keep that offensive punch going for 48 consecutive minutes with fresh bodies, I like their chances next year. I really do. Dan Gilbert will have to bite the bullet on this and pay that luxury tax, but I think – I think it's a worthy investment. I mean, you have a great team. To me, it's just like what happened to the Bulls when uh, Nate Robinson had to take over. Great. I mean, they had a great chemistry role. Nobody expected them to make it that far. But you had a lot of players who were extremely well at playing their position. What do you have with the Cavs? A lot of players that are extremely well at playing their position when they do it effectively. But if you get your starting five right, you get healthy, then you have these role players coming in doing what they're supposed to do, I think it's a recipe for another deep run. And I go stream championship, but if you got a healthy Cavaliers, I like the chance. Now, this is a question. Does trading away Anthony Bennett, Andrew Wiggins, and a 17, well, 16 first round draft pick for Kevin Love, who may only stick around one more year? Will that be worth it? Because that's three number one picks that you're trading away for a guy that you only had two years. In the end, will yep. that be worth it? Yep, and I'm going to tell you why. Look at what they were able to do without Kevin Love. And Kevin Love is one of my favorite players right now. I'm going to be honest with you. I love his game. But they made it to the finals without Kevin Love. They made it to the finals with LeBron and a bunch of role players. So if you get the opportunity to get three number one picks, Right. And what, what what else is on the table for Kevin Love? You said three number one picks. And what else? It, it was Love for Andrew Wiggins, last year's top pick, Anthony uh-huh. Bennett, and a protected 2015 first-round pick from Philadelphia. That, that, that was the trade that brought Love to Cleveland. I do. So it. Andrew Wiggins might, might be a stud. Anthony Bennett, not so much. Yeah, this, not, this year's this year's fifteen pick, so there's a lot, a lot of picks there. I know, I know picks are not really uh, tangible; they're just little assets that you have. But that Wiggins pick, you wonder if. But like I said before, had Wiggins chose to be on LeBron's French agency, Clutch Sports, he would never got traded. So LeBron's pay paying this in the end, hurt the Cavs. Because had Andrew Wiggins signed with Clutch Sports, he would never got traded. Because he didn't sign with Clutch Sports, he didn't have no problem sending him on to Minnesota. 
So while LeBron's being GM and coach, he loves his pettiness and emotions get in the way of him making a sound decision for the team. So that's why I think they should check him a little bit in Cleveland because Sal has been putting Wiggins in a trade to get love rather than keeping him because he and Sal cut sports. So, bro, I think that's your mindset. You can't run a business and be an emotional and that petty. The greater good, because I, I wonder in his mind, what he, what he think in his head, bro, is that, yo, maybe I should have not had a big industry so we could have used him in the finals. Might not have made, made a difference, but when Kyrie got hurt, he could have helped with some of the load, you know? Correct. Which is true. So, and they needed it. So, I'm wondering, will LeBron's moment of emotional intimacy and pettiness be a point of do we look back two years from now and be like, had he not let Williams go, what could the chaos have done and be? Man. Because that's the only thing that's been ridiculous. Tell you. It's, well, I already stuck him this year. This is year one of it. And if Love leaves after next year, it's really going to sting him. Napoli Bennett, okay, he ain't nothing. But the one guy who we can point to is Wiggins. And this year's pick, who who cares about that pick? Who, if somebody returns somebody good, real, real good, we still do get to make the kind of love. But, you know, maybe Minnesota could have got to pick him somewhere else and you not give up, you know, your guy. But, hey, Minnesota guy, what they need. And Minnesota, excuse me, Minnesota. But they have a nice good team. They, they got, got a South 2 pick this year. Towns of Okafor, with Wiggins, Zach, uh, Zach Levine, Ricky Rubio, Bennett, Adrian Payne. I mean, they have nothing lost in Minnesota they're doing up there, bro. They, they might be tired two or three years up in Minnesota. So, Maybe. the T will Maybe. do you what they think. And, uh, dog, did you see some cool with Clippers, New Jersey, how ugly they are? What, one, more, one more time, what did you say? Did you see the Clippers, New Jersey's? How ugly they are! They're very ugly. They're terrible. They're hideous. They're absolutely hideous. I, it looks like Pac Man Little Brother designed them. It's, it's terrible. Speaking of Clipper news, they trade Matt Bond and Spencer Hall for Lance Stevenson. Okay. I don't like that Lance Stevenson fit there. I just I, I don't know, man. Lance Stevenson is a great player, but he's the type of individual that needs a solid fit. I don't know if that's it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I could be wrong about that. that. And uh, Eric Gordon option his contract with the Pelicans for one more year. And the uh, Pelicans are now eyeing former Nuggets interim head coach Melvin Hunt to join Avengers injury staff in New Orleans. Uh, Adrian Griffin will join Scott Skiles staff in Orlando. James Borrego, uh, Jordan Staff in San Antonio, taking Jim Boylan's place, who moved into Chicago to be on the Fred Hoiberg with the Bulls. So the assistant coach shuffle now is only popping, bro. <laughs> they moving around. This is true. Shout out to Alvin Gentry, though, finally getting a, another shot, man. Alvin Gentry is a cool, cool dude, man. Well, you know, shout, shout, shout out to my man. I think he's going to do good things down the world. Yes, indeed. And, dog, I didn't realize he was at it. Oh, he's 60. Yeah. He don't look 60. He's 60. I didn't know. I didn't even know that, man. I really didn't. I didn't. I thought Alvin Gentry was like 48, maybe 50. Nah, he he is 60 years old. I'm like, dog, dog. So, folks, I'm telling you, pregnancy's coming up. Next week, we're going to break down the draft for you. After the draft, on, since we started as a get ready next week, we're talking about drafts and trades next week. Can you then get ready for pregnancy starting in July? So, hey, on Tuesday, Thursday, talking about NBA coming up real soon, folks. I hope you enjoy that. So, for speech, boss man, and the emailers and the, and the texters, get our names right, please. Speech, boss, Jared the boss man, true speech. If you can't get that right, God help you. We out. And if you don't know, now you know.